I truly believe the only way that Gary will ever be successful again is if uh, it happens from the outside in instead of the inside out. The decline in the, uh, and the, 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 the beginning stages of the white flight, if you may, was in 1967 when Mayor Hatcher was elected uh, the first you know, African-American mayor of a major city in Gary. So at that point it began, the first, let's say, five or six years, seven years, it was it was steady but not staggering. At no, it, it was almost hard for you to come home at any point during the day, any day of the week, and not see a moving truck. People were moving out left and right, one by one, in groves. When South Lake Mall became uh, came into existence, I believe around seventy two or seventy three, one after another, were moving their business to Maryville, and that's so you've seen. Just a reversal. What was here was moving to Maryville. The businesses were moving to Maryville. So, yeah, there was not only just the white flight, but there was the green flight with the merchants taking their money and their business. And, more importantly, what killed Gary was losing that tax structure. Because when you lose business, you lose tax structure, and you lose your ability to be able to fund things properly. The only way I truly think that this problem can be fixed is if they reach out to the same very people who left it, in my opinion, it's a it's a real sore spot for me, but it's a lot of the same people who created the issues that 30 and 40 years later need to step up and help fix the issues. I think that if you go and you reach out to the Maribels and the Crown Points and the Munsters and the Highlands and the Holberts and the folks that surround the community of Gary, because, again, my philosophy is that Gary was, is, and always will be the heart and soul of Northwest Indiana. Yeah, I mean, we're sitting here on one of the greatest natural resources in the entire world. I challenge anybody to go out and find a, a natural body of water that's as beautiful as what we have here. And again, our proximity to Chicago and, and demographically and, and the jobs and what we can offer. I mean, we have some of the highest wages in the nation here in northwest Indiana. We're very fortunate to live in an area that's uh, a strong unionized area that's created wages for folks like it has. And whether you uh, are a proponent of unions or not, it's a reality. We live in an area that's very successful uh, and provides well for a lot of families. And so, again, if you reach out to those folks in those communities and look for ways to be creative, uh, ask for help, those are the types of things that it's going to take to create a way of thinking. It's not so much financial, but it's getting people to think that it can happen. Part of the biggest hurdle, in my opinion, is is that people don't believe it can change. You've got to be able to sell them a bill of goods, if you may, that things can change and it will change with their help. 